Good evening. Welcome to the BBC News at six. If he appeared nervous at first, it was an increasingly confident and unrepentant Tony Blair who appeared before the Iraq inquiry today. The former Prime Minister explained why he believed then and still believes now that going to war with Iraq was the right decision. He claimed that after the attacks of 9-11, what he called the calculus of risk had changed, that Saddam Hussein and what were thought to be his weapons of mass destruction could no longer go unchallenged. Mr Blair said not a day went by, even now, that he didn't think about his decision to go to war. This report from Nicholas Witchell contains some flash photography. He arrived in the half-light of dawn to the sound of a single bell tolling. Tony Blair's convoy headed for the basement. Moments earlier, he'd slipped in through a side door. It was a low-key start to a highly charged day. Tony Blair! In the streets around the conference centre were the protesters, not as many as some had predicted, a couple of hundred at most, whose verdict on Tony Blair has already been decided. Security was tight, tempers were occasionally frayed. We're going to have a police state at least organise it properly. Standing in line were some of those whose lives were changed by the Iraq war. These were some of the families who lost sons and daughters and husbands, waiting for their chance to hear the former Prime Minister in person. At 9.30 sharp, the session began. Mr Blair took his place. He looked pensive. Good morning. Good morning. I would like to start by welcoming our witness Sir John Chilcott said many people wanted answers, but he reminded everyone that this wasn't a trial. And so the Iraq inquiry began its questioning. They went to the event which changed everything, 9-11, and Tony Blair was soon in his stride. The crucial thing after September the 11th is that the calculus of risk changed. That meant, Mr Blair said, that someone like Saddam Hussein, with his history of defiance over weapons of mass destruction, had to be confronted. The primary consideration for me was to send an absolutely powerful, um, clear and unremitting message that after September the 11th, if you were a regime engaged in WMD, you had to stop. Mr Blair flatly denied the suggestion that he'd signed in blood with George Bush in April 2002 to invade Iraq. But he did say that he wanted Britain to be alongside the Americans. And I'd said we would stand shoulder to shoulder with them. We did in Afghanistan, and I was determined to do that again. So what precisely had George Bush understood from that? What he took from that was exactly what he should have taken which is that if it came to military action, because there was no way of dealing with this diplomatically, we would be with them. Then to regime change, an illegal policy, but had Mr Blair embraced it? Um, no, the absolutely key issue was the WMD issue. But the line between regime change and disarmament seemed at times to be blurred. I think there is a danger that we end up with a, a very sort of binary distinction between regime change here and WMD here. And then there was Mr Blair's recent BBC interview with Fern Britton in which he did appear to endorse regime change. If you had known then that there were no WMDs, would you still have gone on? I would still have thought it right to remove them. Mr Blair seemed to say that he hadn't been fully prepared when he did that interview. He'd misspoken. I did not use the words regime change in that interview, and I did not in any sense mean to change the basis. Obviously, all I was saying was that you couldn't describe the nature of the threat in the same way if you knew then what you know now. On the Iraq dossier of September 2002, Mr Blair defended his categoric statement that he believed beyond doubt that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. I did believe it. I mean, that was the, and I did believe it, frankly, beyond doubt. Mr Blair was satisfied that the invasion had been lawful. He believed contrary views in Cabinet had been heard. He believed Britain had had proper plans for the aftermath. What it is. And Mr Blair so believed that, he did the I right thing. Say to people, this isn't about a, a lie or a conspiracy or a deceit or a deception. It's a decision. In the same situation, Mr Blair said he would take the same action again. I had to take this decision as as Prime Minister, and it 
was a huge responsibility then, and there's not a single day that passes by that I don't reflect and think about that responsibility, and so I should. And no regrets? Responsibility, but not a regret for removing Saddam Hussein. Come I on. think he was Be a, quiet, please. I think that he was a monster. I believe he threatened not just the region, but the world. And in the circumstances that we faced then, but I think even if you look back now, it was better to deal with this threat, to deal with it, to remove him from office. And I do genuinely believe that the world is safer as a result. He'd and spent more than six hours at the witness table. Anyone hoping for a grilling will have been disappointed. Was it was an at times session. passionate defense yeah. by Tony Blair of his decisions on Iraq. Nicholas Witchell, BBC News, at the Iraq Inquiry. So after six hours of intense questioning, what have we learned from Tony Blair's evidence and what impact will it have? Here with his assessment is our deputy political editor, James Landale. Never has a former prime minister been questioned so publicly for so long over a decision that so divided the nation. Tony Blair has faced other inquiries on Iraq, but never with the stakes so high, the focus so sharp. Seven years on, he's still defending a war that cast a shadow over his premiership and some say over politics itself. For two years now, he's largely stayed away from the cameras, but today, with the eyes of the world upon him, he returned to the stage for perhaps his last real chance to make the case for war. The tan's a little deeper, the hair's a little greyer, but the defiance and conviction is utterly undimmed. You have to make a judgment. If there was any possibility that he could develop weapons of mass destruction, we should stop it. That was my view. That was my view then, that's my view now. My judgment is you don't take any risks with this issue. You've made that, I think, very clear. So what Tony is saying, yes, he accepts there are no weapons of mass destruction, but from what we did discover after we've got there, we did the right thing. So, no apology from Mr. Blair for ousting Saddam or for the chaotic aftermath that ensued, but instead a new argument that the same action may have to be taken again today. He said that Iran's repressive regime, its nuclear weapons program and its links with terrorist groups posed a similar risk that could not be ignored. I would say that a large part of the destabilization in the Middle East at the present time comes from Iran. The link between Iran having nuclear weapons capability and those types of terrorist organization, it's the combination of that that makes them particularly dangerous. Tony Blair today was not literally in the dock, but his reputation, his legacy, well, that quite clearly was. But how much has his evidence shed new light or changed any minds? Most people who will have listened to what Tony Blair had to say today will have had their suspicions confirmed that when all is said and done, this was a decision that he took to go to war in Iraq to serve the interests of the White House rather than serve the interests of the British people. Clearly, some of the information that was put in front of Parliament, the dodgy dossier, for instance, was just unacceptable and wrong and shouldn't um, happen again. But I think we have got to wait for Chilcot's full report before we can and come to a full conclusion. One man who has come to a conclusion is James Sadry, who heckled Mr Blair in the inquiry. It was just the, um, the kind of audacity of Tony Blair to talk about, you know, openly about the fact that 100,000 people that he would accept have died, uh, have been killed and have no regrets about it. I mean, I think a lot of people in the room, because there was a lot of families, obviously, were feeling really frustrated. The attention now turns to Gordon Brown, who'll give his own evidence to the inquiry in a few weeks' time. The question is whether he will make the case for war with exactly the same unapologetic gusto as Tony Blair. For unlike his predecessor, Mr Brown has an election to fight. James Landau, BBC News, in Downing Street.